So I'm still fairly early in my research into the VAT group, but I've liked what I've seen so much that I've actually bought a couple of shares. So I want to... I want to share my early research into this one and see what you think. Um, so this is a, a it's a nine billion Swiss franc stock. So it's another one I found on the Swiss exchange. Um, and just for reference, a Swiss franc is like ninety one p or something like that. So I always just think of them quid for quid. It's like the easiest way for me to think about the, uh, how this works. So. Uh, so VAT Group, it's uh, it's got nothing to do with VAT. Uh, it's got nothing to do with... I don't even really understand why it's got the T in its name, because it makes vacuum systems. They should have called themselves VAC Group. Um, they also make vacuum valves. It's pretty profitable, so I guess I've got to try and sell you vacuum valves. Um, so look, they're not as boring as they sound. They're, uh, they're a key part in almost all of the world's high-tech growth industries, so... If you think of anywhere that needs a clean room or dustless production, uh, then VAT step in. They do more than just vacuum valves because um, vacuum uh, systems can be used uh, in a lot of things. So they can be used in things like material processing, scientific research, vacuum coatings. Uh, they can be used in industries like life sciences, synthetic biology, solar panel manufacturing, lab-grown meat, semiconductor, semiconductors. It's it's literally a Cathy Wood um, fan fest. Um, so that group are the undisputed leaders in uh, this segment. They have 60% market share across all of the industries they serve. And they plan on staying there too. They've got the largest R&D team uh, 300 R&D engineers currently employed at the company. So I had a quick look through the customer base, Steve. Uh, how about this for a list? They list ASML, KLA, LAM Research, Samsung, Intel, Micron, LG, TSMC, SK Hynix as key clients in just the semiconductor space. If we're going to life sciences and biology, they say Thermo Fisher, Hitachi Life Sciences, Calzis, and they even supply CERN, the Hadron Collider folk. Uh, they not just install and manufacture, they also service and provide training on these items too. So they're literally positioned as the experts in this field. So I'm going to give you some quick financials. Um, so it's a mid-cap stock, it's under 10 billion. Um, they have just over a billion in revenue, 26% net margins, which means 268 million uh, is bottom line profit. They're a premium business. Uh, the market knows this. It slaps a 34 times earnings multiple on them, uh, which, you know, especially when their revenue is only forecast to grow in the sort of low to mid teens. Uh, it's it's quite a lot. Some return on stats, because, you know, we like these return on equities, nearly 43 percent return on assets, 22.8 percent um, return on capital employed, 14.8 percent averaged over the last three years. If you want it from just last year, it's 46 percent. Debt's well managed. There's only two things on the balance sheet, a low interest 0.9% bond and a 1.9% partially drawn revolver. It's really well covered. 92% uh, of it is covered by just one year's operating cash flow. Uh, the debt interest payments themselves are covered 330 times by EBIT. Uh, so look, here's some bad news for you. Order intake was down last year. Um, this is pretty much what we're seeing in some of the lower tier semiconductors where they've started to cut down on capex and expansion. So this is short term bad news for that. And I would expect them to have maybe a down or maybe a flat or maybe a meager growth kind of year. But in the coming years, when these capex spends begin again and capital loosens a little bit, I'd expect that to do very, very well. And they do too. They're projecting that they'll reach two billion in revenue, so double their revenue in the next five years. And they think they can reach EBITDA margins of about 32 to 37 percent. And if it manages that, you're going to wish you bought it at this kind of valuation, I think. Um, so the stock is actually well off its highs. It's down about 38.5% from, from its uh, its peak position. So, you know, it is represented in the share price. Uh, so, yeah, I own it. I've got a small position. I'm hoping it goes down a little bit, Steve, so I can get some uh, get some uh, more value out of it. And um, it pays a 1.8% dividend. Oh, that's similar then to Intercontinental. There are a few things there that make quite a lot of sense to me here. So you point out mid-teens revenue growth on a PE of 34. I pulled a face because I was trying to work it out in my head and I got to 32, which is, I'll count that as close. Um, so I guess one thing to keep an eye on here, like Nintendo, is you said this, they basically do 
machine servicing and training uh, pretty much and i wonder in that case if you get a better revenue mix here you might well find that earnings and margin expands and these profits clip along a bit faster than that revenue does so if you think most places don't really uh, uh, not most places there are quite a few businesses that run on a model of have the machine have the damn machine what do i care i'm going to make money servicing it basically or replacement parts or anything along those lines all of that significantly higher margin nintendo style basically I also thought dustless production, yeah, that made me think of semiconductors, to be honest, with my limited knowledge of semiconductors. And I wonder whether the stocks are suffering because semiconductor in general are suffering a little bit here. And that seems to be an important part of their kind of business. The vacuum, I, I thought maybe that's what VAT Group standed for, actually. Standed for? Stood for. Um, I thought maybe it wasn't a, just a word that you meant to read. Maybe it's like an acronym. So it stands for vacuums and things. Could be. That sounds about right to me. Hmm. Do you have any other thoughts on it? Um, not particularly the one, other than that I just thought, um, I, I, I mean, it's come down 5% since I've owned it, so it's one of those times where you wish you had some cash. That's probably another thing I would add to my pile of things that I'd look to buy. I'm, I'm going to wait till April now till I, till I buy any more, but I, those return on stats, Steve, are, uh, they're all very, very impressive. So, uh, you're definitely right about expanding margins. I think that's why they think their EBITDA margins are going to grow, um, to, you know, if they grow to thirty-seven percent, then they, there's going to be a hell of a lot more making its way down to the uh, down to the bottom line. But I think this is a pretty exciting kind of boring company. It's an industrial doing boring things that is part of a, a picks and shovel play on a on a on a broader market. So I I like it um, quite a lot to be honest. Yeah, I wrote down picks and shovels. I actually wrote down Kathy Wood picks and shovels while you were talking. Um, and this feels like the kind of stock that we're familiar with. You mentioned Carl Zeiss or Zeiss or however you pronounce that last word along the way. It feels like a that kind of uh, company to me. It, it's, yeah, it's, I think it's one of those companies that if you're really interested in, if you really believe that semiconductors, life sciences, uh, you know, bio, synthetic biology, if you believe in those kind of things, but you don't want to risk it on a company that doesn't make any money, then, you know, that group might be you know might be a suitable pick because you could you could take that company and if, if those areas zoom off and become huge uh, markets then you know that will do very very well and if they only sort of shuffle along like they are doing then that should still do pretty well so um you know it, it may it may flatline for you is the truth of the matter is if they if these kind of sa saunter along that might flatline to get itself down to a 15 or 20p that's what industrials do if they don't have the growth of the the surrounding markets but i think this is a premium business it does deserve a premium valuation it's just whether you can get to the 34 earnings multiple on them and say that you're comfortable with that yeah that's i guess one for people to figure out for themselves a little bit but interesting stock i always like these kind of Swiss franc uh, denominated stocks and you said you picked up a couple chance to buy some more.